we have done the development part we call the dll and pdb file then we have to integrate this dll all this library file the crm system we have to configure it so that next day whenever the event happened the plugin trigger. we create the plugin which is needed to trigger on create of the account record so we have to register that on the create of account event so to register that we can use first word method is we can use the ui based tool with the name plugin registration tool which come as part of the sdk one thing to note over here is if you are registering the plugin with dynamic 365 version 900 you have to use the plugin registration tool also from the same sdk for it earlier this was not the case earlier backward and forward compatibility was available but now if you use the plugin registration tool from the previous sdk it will not work there is a confusion i know that there is a confusion that's why we need to have both the sdks keep ready whenever you are going for any dll or any tools just go for the latest version but if you want to look back for any other files or any other sample code use the older one in future we'll have a combined one available for the nan version also so using this plugin registration tool which is a ui tool you can register your dlls it could be plugin dll or custom workflow activity dll so how to download the sdk for dynamic 365 version i know oh we have shown this in the in the previous session so we have downloaded as a naked package from powershell so this is the link i can just give you this link and where we can refer it so basically you have to create one folder in your drive and then you have to use powershell and then you run one script so the script is given online and that script you have to run so maybe i'll just show you once again search it normally we don't find this link download tools from nuggets so I'll just send that on chat you can utilize it now directly normally when you search it on google we don't reach this easily so what i basically need to do is i just need to create one folder in my local drive and then i just have to copy this the entire script given over here copy this then i have to run it on powershell one step at a time i will create one folder first so i'll just copy my folder somewhere in my directory here i create a folder new folder with a name sdk version 9 oh so give the name of the folder without any spaces if you need underscore you have the folder created over here sdk version and i have created that multiple times location then you go to powershell which is a tool available in your windows run as admin click yes so you are running the powershell this is kind of an updated version of your dos ms dos so here you can just type go to your default yeah so you go back to your root directory then you just go to this particular folder where you have this folder you created and this is going to be used for downloading the files so cd that particular file i have created is enter okay i am inside this folder now after that i have to run the script so i will go to this particular url copy the script come back to my powershell just right click so it will be copied so if everything is fine if you have system admin privilege on your machine etc then you will start downloading it so there are four folders it will create so you can see that it is just installing the plugin registration tool nugget first second it will install metadata browser there are four tools so basically for this slide these are the structure you are going to get you get four folders core tools package deployment plugin registration and script and tools. so this four folders will get inside that you will have dl as well as the tools so it will install like this it might take some time depends upon your net speed and other security checking it for me normally it won't take more than a minute or two so it is trying to create so once you create it will be like this i'll show you here it will create one folder so i have done it before i'll show you that this is the one so you'll get a folder with the name tools you say that all you get all these four folders package deployment we'll get the package deployer tool inside this with the dll we'll just open the plugin registration tool and then dll you get here so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a plugin registration tool over here so you download the dk very good deal. so when you are just trying to connect your well, plugin registration tool this is the option you get you might have this option change over here so either you have to select on premise if you are trying to connect the plugin registration tool with on premise version 
or for online you have to connect office 365 you have to select your online region on which data center you have your crm account created if you are using online so i'll tell you an easy way to identify it second thing you will just mention your username and password once you just enter your details it will take a few seconds once it is connected to show you all the assemblies which has registered to the system like this and then you have to register your assembly so two things to note here one is you have to register your plugin assembly which is just created second thing you have to register your plugin step so plugin step is basically the registration of your event handler so if you can see this this picture you will mention on which event or message which entity it is those details you have to mention you have to mention the event primary entity secondary entity filtering attributes all this you have to mention so basically you have to register two things first one is the plugin assembly second thing is the plugin steps so once you've done that the registration is done after that you can test the plugin so let's do that so let me go to the plugin registration tool from the sdk first of all click on create new connection okay if it is on premise account you have to mention that you are of your server port number the authentication method like active directory or ifd you just give your username and password the domain you have to give here we are going to utilize on uh, cloud one more thing that dynamic 5 version 9.0 is available only on cloud as of now they will be releasing the on-payment version in a few months so you have to connect to office 5 for the cloud version you can check for this check boxes you have to select your region so there's an easy way to do that one way is just look at your account and look for this number so if it is north america from where you have created your account then it will be india it will be crm8 if it is uk it will be crm5 if it is uh, some other region that we have multiple regions now and if you don't know it just mention don't know that option also over there but it will take some time to connect so if you know the exact location here we have only three or four now i don't remember the exact number for this we have india region over here or you can just mention for me it's north america you just mention your complete credential which is nothing but your email id just mention your password click login so the tool has to be connected with your crm server first so it will take some time this is connected you can see all the existing assemblies are registered over here so we have one with the name already here so we can perform multiple options over here you can register new assemblies new step we can view this details in a different modes i'll show you that you can debug the plugin you can update the plugin you can unregister the plugin unregister means just deleting the dll from the server okay so here we have so this is what i have used last time and then you have plugins are here so i'm just going to unregister this here because we are using the same version unregistering so it will delete everything from the server so these are the assemblies we have here for every as assembly you can see here these are multiple assemblies so if I just go to this one, so this is one plugin, this is another plugin, and for each plugin we'll have one or more steps. You can see assembly, plugin, and step. So plugin is nothing but the event handler. So like that for every assembly we might have multiple plugin, and one plugin we might have multiple steps like that we have. All right. So now let's register our assembly. I'll go to register, register new assembly. Here I have to select the location of the assembly. I have to mention the isolation mode and then the location where the assembly need to be stored. Isolation mode means if you are registering the assembly, we have to if you are want to register the assembly or DLL for a cloud version, we have to mention isolation mode. So that mode gives more security and a few restrictions. So in online we have only sandbox mode available, but if you are using on premise, you can either go for sandbox or none option. Since it is cloud, I am already connected. I don't even get the NAND option. We can have to switch to isolation mode as sandbox. Then we have to mention the location where the assembly should be stored. I can register this database. I can register the disk that is local drive. Or I can mention GAC. GAC is a folder inside System32, which is give a lot more security. So the recommended version is database. So I'm selecting that. So now I have to just select the location of my assembly. So I'll go to my folder. So keep all this folder open. So this is the location of my assembly. I select that 
and this is my sample training plugin. As well as the DLL, so you can see there are two plugins inside here. We want to register all of them or one of it. So normally what you do in the production is for all the plugin we'll only have one DLL. So you might have 30 or 40 or 50 plugins which is the same DLL. That is one way of looking at it. Or for each assembly or for each functionality, we can create one assembly within that one or more. That way also we can keep track. So here I have one assembly with two plugins. So here is a button register plugin assembly. So this tool has a resolution issue. Sometimes you might need to change the resolution of your system, then you do register it. Or you simply can just press tab and you can do it. Tab, tab, tab. You can see control is here, tab. One more time, it will be on this, this here. For me, I can see it half, I can see here. Click register assembly. Within a few seconds, the assembly and the plugin will be registered. One assembly is registered, two plugins are registered. So I got my assembly register. You can see that here. Yeah, so I got the assembly register and the two plugins registered. So this is the first part of the registration. And the second part is you have to register the plugin step. Only then we'll tell the system on this event this plugin has to register. For that, I have to select the plugin first and go to register new step. So in this case, I have to trigger this plugin on creative account. So I have to mention that. I have to mention the event create entity name. I'll say account second entity. We don't have second entity over here. So here this plugin is triggering on creative account. But there are situations when you want to assign one account record. To a user and both users I need to deal with that. So in that case, I will have secondary entity as user. Here we don't have it. So I can just mention none. You have to mention filtering attribute. So this majorly comes when you are or uh, I mean updating. I need to mention on which field value changes the plugin need to be triggered. That I can mention over here. That is only needed when you are performing update operation. So here we are just creating only for create we are doing now. So this is the event handler, that is the assembly name dot plugin name. And this is a step name, assembly name dot plugin name, colon, the event name, creator of account. So this gives everything, right? This gives the information. Now we have to select on which user's context we have to run this plugin. So by default, it will be on the context of calling user. In the code we have mentioned, in the code we have mentioned, a user ID where you are connect, connecting to the server server. This is where it is. So this is equivalent to that calling user. So that is also where you mentioned calling user. But I can run this plugin on the security context of any other user, on the admin or any other user. And that operation is known as impersonation. Then the execution order. We know that on creative account record there may be multiple plugins are triggering custom one or standard one default plugin. So what is the order in which my plugin need to be executed? That is known as execution order. You can enter a description over here if you want. Then you have to select the plugin execution stage, pre-validation, post, or pre. I'm going to select post operation. Synchronous or asynchronous? You can select synchronous. And then where the plugin need to be deployed, on the server side or on the offline also. Server, it will always be a server. Definitely it has to run on the server side. Right, on the database. I have one more option with the name offline. So dynamic certify can be accessed online as well as offline when you when you just registered, when you just configured Outlook to run in the offline mode. So if Outlook is configured to run in the offline mode and dynamic certify is registered to run along with Outlook, then CRM also can be run in offline mode. In such a situation, if you want to have a copy of your plugin, in your local machine to run, I can mention that. That means on creative account record, if you want to trigger this plugin, even when internet is not connected, that is possible. So you have to mention that. Hope it is clear. Then I have two more tabs over here. One is secure configuration, other one is unsecured configuration. So here I need to just pass the XML text over here. So plugins are basically even handles as you already know now. But in certain situation, you might need to pass some parameters to this plugin. You can pass the input parameters to this plugin. So we can pass XML content over here. We will see that maybe in the next session or after that. We'll see how we can pass input parameters to plugin. Once you've done with all this, just click register new step.
we basically did two things. One is we register the assembly. Then for the plugin, we register the steps. So next time, whenever anyone is creating an account record, this plugin will trigger after the creation of account record. And whatever be the code written inside that, that will trigger. So we done two things now. First one is develop the plugin from scratch. Second thing is we registered that was CRM system. Now we can test the plugin. So to test the plugin, I have to create one new account record. So I'll just give a name, Pamela account, and a few details. And we create the account record. Account is being created. So now the once the record is being created, just after that. So now we can see that the plugin will be triggered by now. To test that, we have to check whether here an activity is created. You can see all of that. The task is being created. So this is the task created by the plugin. So from here you can see you can see it regarding a set to sample account. This is a subject line. This is a deadline is set to seven days from today. Seven days from today is set. All right. So the plugin is triggered successfully. It just created a task for the account record and it set all the fields properly. Or else you can just check from one more place. These are the default places like you mentioned. Go to activities on the account. Go to all activities. There you can see the task created. So plugin triggered successfully. So this is what we did. So now if you want to make any changes to this plugin, you can make the changes, build it again. So I'll get the updated DLL. Go to your plugin registration tool. So if you want to change that, you just select the assembly again, click update, then select the updated DLL. So th that is what you have to do every time. So it's not like you have to unregister it, you can administer it, but unregistering it, you don't do it normally. What you always do is you just update it. And do it. Because in a production environment, you'll have one assembly where you'll have 30 or 40 plugins inside that. So if you are unregistering, that means all of these 40 plugins are not going to work till you have the new plugin updated and there is one danger also with that every plugin will have plugin registration step right or i mean that the plugin event so when you delete one assembly then you are updating and then re-registering it this plugin step will not be preserved they all will be deleted so you have 30 plugin imagine for a situation and each of this plugin will be triggered on two or three events you'll have more than 100 events right and then if you delete all this then you have to set up all this event one after the other and sometimes if you don't have the proper release note with you, then you are gone. So because of that reason, it's very, very important when you're going to make changes to a plugin, never ever unregister it. Instead, select the assembly, just click update and then select that. Update it. That's how you have to do it. Unregistering it just for uh, very small plugins or one or two assemblies where you know the plugin step because plugin step will not be preserved after you unregister an assembly. That's about the plugin registration. And then one more, one last thing I need to explain. So this plugin now trigger on create of account record. I can create one more step over here. For example, if I have the code to trigger on update of account record, so I can say update account record none. Then I can say attributes because update operation. So by default, it is selected all the attributes. So all the 160 plus attributes will change the plugin will trigger. That's not a good practice. So if, if my plugin need to be triggered on change of account number, account name, account rating, you can select those fields, you can see them. The next time when anyone is changing any of these fields, the plugin will trigger on update of account. And rest of the deal you can set as it is, pre or post or whatever. So I got two. That's it. So normally we, we may have five or six or even more than that. So on all this event, the plugin trigger. Someday what happened is the same plugin code supposed to be triggered on multiple events on multiple entities for example on update of contact if i want to trigger the same plugin provided i have the code inside this i can mention that on create of account create of contact delete of but the plugin code is supposed to i mean support that otherwise if i just do this even update something it might throw another because an update of account i don't have the code to manage that so it will throw an exception so my point over here is the same plugin can be triggered on a set of but every time you have to select the plugin then you can add all this but it is very important when you are triggering this so if you want to update one plugin stuff double click on it change the message change the entity you can just simply do it or if you want to i mean do that you can simply remove it or you want to unregister the item yes if you want to do that or while you are doing the testing etc and if you some someday what happened is on the same event multiple plugins are triggering, 
it might make some issues. So what you can do, so you don't need to unregister it even. Once you disable it, you will be able to see it has a different icon. This is a disabled one. You can see this icon, and this is the enabled one. So like this, during that testing, you don't need to directly go out and unregister a plugin, neither plugin step. Rather, you can disable the plugin step, and then you can update the plugins. Cool, so that's about plugin development and plugin registration.